what happened to this generation welcome back everybody i pray y'all are having a wonderful blessed day as we thank the most time for so much um this is a video response back to you craig 43 a big shout out to you um powerful email um i got it yesterday and uh, i was led in my spirit to do this video about generation um what happened to this generation is what you ask um, in your email. But my thing is, not so much about what happened to this generation, but what happened to the parents. Hmm. What happened to the ones who taught? What happened to the elders, the ones who supposed to carry the message from generation to generation to generation to generation? so on and so on and I'm, I'm not saying that to talk about talk bad about you know a lot of elders that they didn't teach right because a lot of them did but then a lot of them was foolish let's just keep it real um just because you do something so long don't mean that it was right because even in my time growing up i seen a lot of ones that was way older than me way before me live a stupid lifestyle didn't didn't teach nothing about you know the bible and teach nothing about Yahweh. They was just caught up in their lifestyle of sin, and that's the way they live, and that's the way they die. So when you ask the question, what happened to this generation, I have to go back to the Word um, and look at what the Word says, not about my opinions, you know, but what happened. You know, and when you biblically, you know, biblically start talking about generation, from generation to generation, it's powerful. Um, a lot of us just wasn't even taught this growing up, how important it was to carry on from generation to generation teaching about the Most High. See, I hear complaints all the time about these kids are so bad, JT. They don't have no role models no more, JT. They lost, man. They are lost generation. They this, they that. But you don't hear too many people talking about it. It was they fault, the ones who didn't teach. Because even in my time growing up, it ain't hardly no fathers. It wasn't hardly no fathers around. Maybe a few, but everybody was locked up or running the streets or already dead. So when there is nobody, and not saying that, to, you know, to um, to say women, you are not important, but I'm, I'm just coming from a man's standpoint like the Bible shows us. The, yes, you carry them. You carry the children for nine months. You carry that load. But when you look at the great responsibility that the Most High have placed on us as men, as fathers, it's no joke. And our father does not take that lightly. And we don't have to answer to why we let these kids get out of hand like this. I'm not talking about everybody because some folks was raised up right. But it was our responsibility Yours too, ladies, but I'm, I'm just speaking from a biblical standpoint how the most time the Bible say fathers don't provoke your children. It always laid out with fathers don't do this. Fathers don't do that. Do, don't do that. So I'm just speaking, you know, from a biblical standpoint, not to say you're not important once again. I have to make that point because when I talk like that, some women think I'm saying it to say you ain't important and all this stuff. But now we got that out of the way. But so many people once again blaming everything on these kids but going back to the word when you look at generations we can say from uh, let's say from Abraham to David you'll see about 14 generations from from uh, Abraham to David and from David until the carrying away of, uh, into Babylon 14 generations from yeah, 14 generations. Matthew 1 and 17 teaches us that all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David until, once again, the captivity in Babylon, 14 generations. And from the captivity in, in Babylon until Yahshua are 14 generations. Now, don't get confused. Don't get lifespans confused with generations. Have to make that point, too. So we see how we are here now. Now, if the older generation, 
before it didn't teach. How you expect the new to get it right? I believe that was Solomon that made a statement saying, don't expect the new generation to do better because the old didn't. And when you go back to Israel, generation after generation after generation, and look at how many times Israel disobeyed the Most High, turned their back on the Most High, complained. They kept following the same pattern over and over and over again. Indeed, you look at the promised land, look at who got in at that time and who didn't. It's very important for us to teach the generation, the generation, the generation about the most high. It's very important. Now, there's one scripture on here I really want to pull up. Uh, give me one second. It's in Psalms um, chapter 145. Um, yeah, 145 of Psalms. Um, yeah, verse 4. It says, One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. It's very important to point this out because it's talking about praising from generation to generation. And along with praising is teaching. Along with teaching is worship. So if you're not teaching that praise and worship from generation to generation, how the next generation going to know? How they going to know anything about the most High? And then you go to Deuteronomy chapter 4, another powerful scripture. Verse 4, I mean, uh, Deuteronomy 4, verse 9, it's talking about obeying the Most High. It's showing us you must be very careful not to forget the things you have seen the Most High do for you. Keep reminding yourself and tell your children and your grandchildren as well. Hmm. Tell your children and your grandchildren so it never stopped. This teaching should have went on over and over and over again, even in our time, and keep going. But some way down the line, the ball got dropped. It's our duty to see that the next generation hears about the Most High, know about the Most High. But some of us have not been doing our duty. That's why I always tell people serving the Most High is, is not something that you just do on Sunday. And just keep this in mind. If all this what I'm talking about is not being done in your own home, you think the public school is going to teach them? And we wonder why the streets getting so many of our babies. So many people depending on somebody else to teach their child something. And then you look at most homes now, children on the uh, the cell phones, the internet, they all and everything else except being taught about the most high. And I'm not talking about all houses. I'm not talking about all people, all parents are like this. But it's a lot that's just dropping the ball. They don't never teach about the Bible. My little four-month-year-old boy, little Jay, I already keep him with me when I'm reading, even though he's that young. But once he start getting old enough to know, best believe I'm going to teach, 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 teach. He's going to be in some videos with me because I'm going I'm gonna to put that in. I already done put it in him. I gave my firstborn back to the most high. Most of us men don't even understand that in the scripture, how you give your firstborn back to the most high. You raise him up to the father. And you speak blessings over their life. It's very important when you have a son. Real, real important. Daughters are important too. But it's something about fathers and sons that the Most High showed us something so powerful with. It's our duty to teach them the truth about the Most High. Once again, look at how many times Israel went, went from generation to generation just falling. The Most High showed us how important it was for the older generation to teach the newer generation. Just like the Bible showed us about women, the old women should teach the younger women. The older men should teach the younger men. In my time right now, there's so many men older than me, way older than me, that's living foolish. They done lived their whole lifestyle running women. 
getting drunk, getting high, and they still not tired of that. What am I going to learn from that? I still learn not to do what they do. But my point is, they never said nothing about the Bible. And their lifestyle, their actions just shows wickedness, just to be real. So my point, once again, if we, if the older generation didn't teach, if I'm right now in this generation don't teach my son, how he going to know? This is our father's will. And so many, I hate to say this, but there's so many single moms are working their butt off so hard. And when they get home, they're tired, they're exhausted. They have nothing left in them. Their energy is gone. And they living paycheck to paycheck, living day to day, trying their best to keep a roof over their child's head, children's head. And they don't have time to teach. Daddy already, father already gone. And you think about what's going on all day. The child is at public school. Listening that all that mess. They history. If you don't teach your child Bible history. And they come back with this public school history. That same mess they try to brainwash us with. It's going to keep your child lost. Who going to teach if you don't? And I'm going to say this, and I mean this out of love, because there's a lot of church buildings that's not teaching. It's a lot of people sitting in church buildings and still ain't being taught what the real, true gospel is. Psalms 78, verse 5 through 7, why I still have it up, is another one I want to point out in this video. It says, The Most High established a testimony in Jacob. And appointed a law in Israel, which he did what? Commanded our fathers that they should teach them to their children. That the generation to come might know. Might know who? The Most High. His commandments. His word. His way. It says, even the children yet to be born, that they may arise and tell them to their children. That they should put their confidence in the Most High and not forget the words, I mean the works of the Most High, but keep his commandments. That's in the Old Testament. That's very powerful. In the New Testament, the New Covenant, they just come back and testify to the Old Covenant, saying the same thing. So there is a, there is a big responsibility in us to teach the young folks. Paul, I believe, that's in Ephesians, Ephesians 6, 1 through 4 says, Children, obey your parents in the Most High, for that is what's right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you and your days may be longer on this earth. Honor your father and mother. So you see how the Bible shows you as a parent, you better be doing what's right. As a child, you better be doing what's right to your parent. Because a parent is held very accountable when they go against their children and don't teach. And child, a, ch a child, once they start knowing better, is going to live a rough life if they disobeying their parents. This is just the word, y'all. That's why, once again, he said, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger but bring them up in the discipline and the instructions of the Most High. Problem is, you look at that scripture, fathers don't provoke your children. You can't even provoke your child if you ain't even around. Let me say that right. Your child is already provoked to anger because you left home. You are not there. You don't want nothing to do with your child. How you going to bring them up in the instruction of the Most High and you not even there? So they leave mama to do everything or grandmother to do everything or thank the Most High when it's men around in these neighborhoods or big brothers or uncles, you know, ones that will take, take you under their wings and teach you the truth. But you are held fathers very accountable when you done 
left. It's a big responsibility on us once again. The biblical pattern is for parents to impart our children the truth, the teachings, the word, the praise, the worship. Now as I close, young men are growing up once again without a, a great example. So the streets have taken most of our babies. They dead. The rappers, and I mean this out of love, but you just look at what's going on now. They see the fortune and the fame. They see the the dope, the dope dealer lifestyle. They see the cars, the rims, the women, the bling bling, and all this, all this, and it makes them say, that's the way I want to live. That's the way to go right there. I want that money. I want that women. I, and then TV, cable, the internet, cell phones don't make it no better. Because all they showing now is not a bunch of positive stuff. Every time you cut on television, it's about a reality show. Women against women. Look at Stevie J and that mess that come on. I mean, it's out of little. That ain't nothing but a bunch of mess. And so many people can't wait to get home and look at that mess. Housewives of this. Basketball wives. All they do is cuss each other out. They ain't showing no example. And half of them can't even stand each other. The women all got their titties all out. And some women looking, some young women looking at that like, I, I can't wait till I can get on a show like that. Ain't hardly no examples left. And I don't care who get mad at that. That's just the truth. How are young women going to teach? I mean, how the old women going to teach the young women? They all on TV with their titties out, breasts all out. Let me say breasts. Dressing all revealing. Running out to some fool. The examples are hardly around now. So that leave the ones who are up under us to look at and believe any and everything they see on television. I go against all of this stuff I see. And it's all a part of the plan to make money. They making more money, more money off of our stupidity. Let me close before I get mad at that. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day.